you are now tuning in to the Going North Podcast with your host, best-selling author, professional speaker, and member of the John Maxwell team, Dominic Dom Brightman. And every Monday and Thursday, we're going to hear the voice of a different author sharing their gifts, stories, and expertise to help you charge forward in life. Now let's get on with the show. And today on the Going North podcast, where we bring some fabulous authors from across the globe. Today's no different. Today's no different. Well, it is kind of different because we got a Charm City bonus episode in the building, baby, with this fabulous lady right here who is a business coach for heart-centered women, and she's also a mindfulness teacher and founder of Miss Biz Mornings Network Organization. This super fabulous, awesome human finds her days gloriously rewarding and filled with all the best life has to offer. And because of that, her previous work includes experiences like owning a decorating franchise, being an American Council on Education certified personal trainer, and selling men's suits, <laughs> as well as creating Finding Your Voice Circles and a small public speaking group circle for women. And not only that, she is most proud of having homeschooled two of her sons, hiked 85 miles, my goodness, in the mountains of New Mexico with a full pack at the age of 54. Yeah, so we got a Spartan in the busy. And not only that, she's been delightfully married to the same amazing man for 40 years. 40 years. So we got a master of many talents. So I got to thank the awesome, fabulous humans known as Wendy Oliver and Mike Sheila for connecting me with this fabulous woman right here. The one, the only, Lisa Stearns. How are you today, ma'am? I'm doing great, Dom. Thanks for having me on. Oh, yeah. It's great having you on the podcast, indeed. Yes, indeed. Congratulations. First ever book. First ever Thank book. You. Thank you. It was quite an undertaking. Oh, yeah. That's right. Because you're never the same person you are when you start the book, but when you finish the book, you're completely different. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. You want to know, you want to learn about yourself, write a book. <laughs> <laughs> Heck, that's a good one liner right there. If you want to know about yourself, write a book. That's write a book. So Absolutely. <laughs> you will learn more about yourself than you ever ever imagined and it will be in things you had no idea you even needed or wanted or uh should learn about yourself yeah exactly it's like learning one time you may might have been a tree in a past life or something <laughs> <laughs> i agree i agree it's like what <laughs> <laughs> i had no idea well i'll tell you that so the funniest thing to me Dom, about me writing my book which is called the list is not enough and, and I, am a, I am a business coach, so I help people set goals. Uh, I help people reach their goals. What, and I wrote my, my process of how, how I work with my clients, but what I recognized most and what kept coming up for me during writing my book is that I did not know how I set goals. I'm very driven, I'm very goal-oriented, but I did not have any idea what my process was. And so that, that was my big takeaway from writing my book was learning, uh, as you and I talked about, learning resilience, you know, that I, that I was very, very resilient, that I continued to get up, even though life was kind of pushing me down a lot. I also learned where I was inclined to take shortcuts that I needed to be aware of and pause and be more thoughtful about what my, where I wanted my future to be, what I wanted my path, you know, where I wanted that path to end up. Um, and also one of the, my big lessons, and this did not come out during the, well, actually it did. It came out during the book too, is because I'm a, I'm a high achiever and I also surprisingly, <laughs> it's a funny thing to put together, but I have, have suffered up until very recently with pretty low self-esteem. And I know most people would not guess that about me. And because of that, I I was constantly on the treadmill to, and I'm very creative. So I'm constantly on a treadmill of what's the next thing. You know, if, as soon as I get something halfway accomplished, three quarters of the way accomplished, I'm already on to the next thing. And I did not have any, even awareness that I never celebrated anything that I had already accomplished. I didn't even know how to celebrate 
what I had actually accomplished. And that's anything from the small thing like, you know, getting the house clean to writing the book. At the end of the book, I was ready as, as I wrote the last word and I was delighted. So I sent this Facebook post out to everybody. Oh my gosh, you know, I've written it. And, you know, the first draft is finally done. My next thought was not let's pause and celebrate and let's go home and, you know, whatever. I'm like, okay, what's next? What do I need to do next? So recognizing in myself the need to pause with each completion of any given goal, any given task, depending on what my mood is like, and celebrate the fact that I, I finished it. I started out, I had an objective, I followed it through, and I completed it, and allow myself to say, wow, good job. That was my best lesson. That was really my best lesson in writing my book. And I find with the women that I work with, this is a common theme. This is, I'm not the only person doing this. You know, we're, I think we are all, on this constant moving sidewalk of got to do more, got to prove more, got to be more, got to finish more. So-and-so is doing this. I guess I got to do that. Um, and, and we just don't stop and pause enough and say, wow, what an awesome accomplishment that was. And sometimes it's getting out of bed. <laughs> you know, there are, there are just days that you need to give yourself a, a huge add a girl for getting out of bed. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's necessary, and I like the fact that you mentioned that in your book because I read a, a pretty decent amount of productivity books from now and every now and then, and that's one thing that I noticed where I'm lacking in myself is like the celebration piece, and I'm glad you actually mentioned that in the book because a lot of folks, they talk about the goal set, setting piece, but not the celebration part where you take the time to actually, even if it's heck, even getting out of bed like that, well, right. I mean, some days it's hard to get out of bed. So if you get out of bed and you get showered and dressed, man, woohoo! <laughs> yeah, exactly. It it may be small, but that's a huge victory because the classic saying goes, it's so true that like, someone else didn't make it up out of the bed today. That's right. Right. And, and, and really, there's a chemical response that happens when you pause to celebrate. There are endorphins, chemicals that are released into your body that allow you to recognize that something positive happens and that encourages you to take on that next big thing or to tackle that next goal that makes you nervous or afraid because you have a built-in memory of, of that endorphin rush, of that positive feedback loop that says, oh, wait a minute, I did something similar to this and I remember, my body physically remembers, chemically remembers that this was a good thing. And I had to relearn that celebration piece. Like it started out with me just like, I would say, oh, good job. But I, there was no physical sensation in my body at all. And I finally, at the end of my book, when I finally got to the point that I launched it, I felt the rush of a job well done. And, and it, takes, it takes practice. If you've not done it, it takes practice. And it feels awkward. It feels very fake and stilted. But I promise you, if you practice it, it leads to really, really good stuff. Ah, uh, feel the rush of a job well done. Oh, yeah. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Especially after doing something as big as event promotion. <laughs> Putting yeah, an event yes. together. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's what it really probably kicks in, I bet, for you, doesn't it? <laughs> yes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, some of those big things, they require a vacation, you know, that, that kind of celebration. <laughs> not, <laughs> not just a pat on the back or an ice cream, ice cream cone. There you go. Get the whole bowl. Let me stop. Don't get the whole bowl. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, and frequently, you know, Dom, frequently when I, because my, my audience is predominantly women. I've worked with men, and, and, it, and, I, and I enjoy working with, you know, I, as much working with men as women. I raised two boys, so, you know, I've, I'm familiar with that whole breed. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> in more ways than one. <laughs> more ways than one. Right. I always say I had a male dog, too, you know, so I had a house full of men, so I got the male thing. But, um, you know, but frequently I find when I ask people, what, what do you do to celebrate, they've got nothing. You know, they don't, even, they don't even know what they would do if they wanted to feel good. And frequently people will go to money things. Well, I can't afford to 
you know, I'd love to go to you know, Hawaii, but I can't afford to do that. Well, celebration doesn't have to cost money. It doesn't have to cost anything. It can be, a, it, you know, it can be a, a shower with your favorite song on as long as you're in the mindset that you are celebrating. And I had one client that, you know, she just loves special soap. But she never allowed herself to buy any because it was too expensive. And I'm like, shoot, woman, you can go out and buy yourself one five dollar bar of soap, you know, exactly. and use that as your celebration practice. You know, it, it it doesn't have to be, you know, new clothes or a big dinner or a trip to somewhere. It really can be something small as long as you are in the mindset, this is my celebration for a job well done. Oh, yes, indeed, yes, indeed. And that's definitely so true. It's like, it doesn't always have to be big. Like it doesn't have to be that big cruise, that trip or like that huge thing. And heck, even a $5 bar of soap, it's like, you know, right? What? like, dude, make, make the investment. <laughs> it's five bucks. It's foot long it's money. <laughs> and it will last you for months. If you're only using it, you know, once a week, if you're saving it for special occasions, it'll last you a while, you know? <laughs> Yeah, exactly like dude that that's a new one <laughs> what an important lesson you know it's a really important lesson uh it doesn't it doesn't take a party to celebrate it only has to be a party in your head you know and in your heart it has to be a party in your heart that's right it has to be a party in your head and in your heart just make sure the party in your head doesn't go too crazy right <laughs> <laughs> Well, and speaking of parties and healthy parties, you mentioned in the beginning of your book that you had a healthy networking plan. And I found that really interesting. I've never heard that before. So any, well, what, what is a healthy networking plan by Lisa's definition? I believe that networking is not just showing up. So it's not like, okay, well, I belong to this organization or, oh, there's somebody's having a networking meeting, so I guess I'll go. I don't know. To me, that's like showing up to the office in your pajamas. You know, you got out of bed, you got <laughs> <laughs> But you left your briefcase and you're all your, you know, your suit clothes and everything. You left them all at home. So to me, you know, if really, if you're looking at networking as a viable business building model, which is the whole reason you network, to me, you need to have a pre-networking plan. And that is finding out if you can, maybe somebody that is going, finding out who the coordinator is, uh, finding out who the chair people are, somebody like that, that, or someone that has a specific interest that you are interested in, and either contacting them ahead of time or being prepared with a conversation that you would like to have with that notable person. Um, showing up early, so hopefully then, usually whoever the coordinator is, they're gonna be there first. So if you get there early, you get to have the first conversation with them. And that's really, that's a really powerful tool because now you have connected with the person that knows all of these other people and is coordinating all of these other people to be there in the first place. So that's another very powerful tool to me that's a, that's a you know, that you need to do before you even walk out the door. And something that I don't find anybody else talks about to me, and so it's one of my other really key points in networking is how much time do you have following the networking event to follow up with people that you connected with. Mm. So for example, if you know that you are, you've got some big launch that you're doing and this kind of, this event is squeaking it in, like you're squeaking it in today, but really for the next seven days, you are, you are, you've got no time for anything. Maybe the best choice just not to go to that event because you don't have the time to follow up. And if you don't follow up within, some people say 48, I say 24 to 48 hours. If you don't have the time to connect with every person that you think you should connect with from that networking event within 24 to 48 hours, don't go. Wow. And that's and so I don't. <laughs> Because here's the thing, if you go with no intention of follow-up and you don't have the time to follow up, your time would be better served making cold calls or, you know, whatever is your money, I call them game changer activities. So whatever your game changer activity is, is in your business, 
your time would be better served spending that hour and a half, two and a half hours. Sometimes, you know, I live in the Baltimore, Washington, DC area. So for me, anywhere I go is usually at least a minimum of a half hour commute each way. And then the meeting is an hour and a half long. So I've, wait, I've used three hours of my prime time that I could be building my business. And if I only go to show up and say, hey, I'm here, I'm Lisa, this is what I do, and then I go home, Again, I really haven't made that that deeper connection. How many people are going to remember me or call on me? Not a whole lot. So then it's the people that I that I've talked to during the meeting that maybe to say, oh, wait a minute, you know, I know someone that I can connect you to. I have a resource that I can um, help you out with. Then being able to go home and have the time to follow up and make that email and say, hey, loved connecting with you. Here's that email connection. Here's that person I said, you know, could help you do whatever it is. Um, or let's get together and have coffee. I really loved hearing about your business, would love to hear more. If you can't make that connection, then, then you, your time is not well spent. So to me, there has to be a pre-networking practice. There has to be, what do I do during the event? And that depends to me on, you know, if you're an introvert, I generally coach my introverts, pick one person, go to the smallest event you can find, make sure you know somebody else that's there and connect with one person. At that point, you can give yourself permission as an introvert. You can give yourself permission to go home. You don't even have to stay <laughs> because you've already put yourself outside of your comfort zone by showing up. So, so to me, it's, it's a powerful, you know, understanding what your limits are and, it, and, and then making the most of that time. And if I know as an introvert and I am an introvert, so if I know as an introvert, if I walk into a room of 200 people, first of all, I'm overwhelmed. I pick out two or three people, either I know that they are going to be there or I find somebody that I know and I ask them to connect me with somebody. I've done my homework so I know what I need. I need a new web designer. I need somebody to help me with my photography. I'd love to connect with somebody that's working with women doing whatever. Um, so I, I'm looking for key things. I get those key things. At that point, if I sit at my table by myself and drink coffee, I'm fine with that because I've done what I set out to do. Instead of walking into the room being overwhelmed, feeling uncomfortable, sitting at the table, hoping somebody comes over and talks to me and going home and then reminding myself what a screw up I am because I'm such an introvert and I can't network effectively. Like there's, there's, no, there's no positive thing in there at all. <laughs> going there and making that positive, you know, what is my capability? What do I want out of this? And then I get to go home and say, great, my objective was to speak to one person. I spoke to one person celebration huge celebration for that and then and then the finished piece to that is that that follow-up practice what are you doing when you come home to make those one two three people that you met you really want to connect with what are you doing to make that next connection happen so that to me is purposeful networking oh yes indeed purposeful networking indeed and it's so true and that and you're so right about that because a lot of folks don't follow up. Heck, even <laughs> myself included, guilty as charged. Like, yeah, I get a card and then out of nowhere, you know, take off the blazer and put the cards with the rest of the <laughs> business card family. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and then they become long lost cousins and brothers and sisters. And yes. like, oh, and you find them like maybe a year or so later, like, oh, whoops. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, business card are like rabbits if you don't watch them you know they multiply quickly <laughs> oh yeah they do yeah. <laughs> they do <laughs> yeah. so here's here here's my favorite tip on that topic my favorite tip is when you walk out I, I do it actually before i walk out the door so i may even go into the ladies room to do this or something so that people don't see me doing it but either in the car on the way out somewhere where i'm on my own i step aside before i even drive home i look through the cards that i collected i pick no more than three for any given event that I take home with me, the rest I throw away. Well, you heard so that. Right, I'm taking folks. the best of the best out of that collection. Only the people that I truly made some kind of either I made a connection with them or or when they were talking, there was something about them that I wanted to make that next connection. Those are the three I take home. I don't take any cards home if 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 I didn't make some kind of connection with them. And that cuts down on that. And then once you've made that connection, now though, now you know whether those cards are important enough to hold on to. You're not you're not just building shoe boxes full of business cards. <laughs> Lots of people have that, so it's it's very common. 
Oh, uh, yeah. And you're definitely right. <laughs> That's right. You heard that right, folks. So go out to seek a true connection, especially with Lisa, so that way you can make the cut. That's right. You have to make a true connection with people. Yeah. Yeah. Creating community that, you know, if, if you're, if you're in business, the whole, the whole objective is creating community and networking. You know, who, who is, how, how big does that web go for me and who am I connected with? You know, we all live in a link. We all live in a LinkedIn world. If we don't know what we need to realize that. And, and it's all, you know, who do you know that knows someone that knows someone that knows someone? Um, and, and, building those genuine heart-centered connection uh, and making that connection valuable to others, not to you. Um, it, it is what, it is always, what can I do for you? That, that's, that's the most powerful networking phrase you can use. Oh yeah. You're definitely right about that. You're definitely right about that. Cause it, it really comes back to you when you do it that way, especially when you just seek to truly, help out someone and heck that's even like part of your business, a heart centered business coach. Right. right? So, yeah. Right. Well, we've all had that person come up to us that we really don't know. And they're kind of pushy and they shove a card in your face. Oh, like, yeah. what am I supposed to do? with this? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> like you might as well be speaking Russian. Like I don't understand this process that you just did, whether they are actually shoving a card in my face or they are shoving their business in my face. I don't know what to do with that. You know, it, like, tell me about you. Tell me about you. Tell me about what you're passionate about. Tell me what you love about helping the clients that you, you know, love working with that I can connect with and that might stand out to me, but, but just, you know, telling me what a great shoe salesman you are, you know, <laughs> okay. <laughs> buy, buy, buy your shoes. Like, why would I buy your shoes? <laughs> <laughs> exactly i have like 50 shoes in my closet why do i need I 51 shoes. right <laughs> i have shoes yes right indeed. is there a question you wish folks would ask you more often when you're being interviewed on these podcasts and radios and such question i wish people would okay Yes. Um, I, I find that people are surprised that I have had struggles in my life. Um, and it's one of the reasons I included that piece of it in my book. Um, the most recent, I've had tremendous health issues where I was almost housebound um, for the last, I've been able to work for the last two, almost two years now, but for the five years before that, I was physically very ill for a number of different things and was really my networking group was the only thing that I did and when I after I did that I went home and slept for for like a day and a half I mean, it was that exhausting for me just to host my networking group so I, I think it's important that people not you know don't assume that just because somebody's got a good strong face on it that there's not other stuff going on behind the back behind the scenes um, and that, uh, you know, all of, all of us have our story. We all have our story. And uh, I started my, my practice, actually, my business name is actually Finding Your Voice of America. I started it uh, because three good friends of mine asked me to start a Toastmasters club. And uh, so I, I chartered a, an all-women's Toastmasters club in my family room. And um, but one of the things that called me to start that was because I had a verbally and emotionally abusive father and I had learning disabilities. So my early formative years were, I was taught not to speak up. <laughs> you wow. know, I either couldn't speak up because I didn't understand because of the learning disabilities or I, I couldn't speak up because it wasn't, it wasn't respected in my home. And so I have had to overcome a lot of, that's where my self-confidence issues have stemmed from is, you know, those formative years were, I was pretty much squashed. Uh, and people generally would not guess that about me. <laughs> oh, wow. So, you know, we all, we all have our journeys. We all have our things that we have overcome. We all have our, our you know, the, our, our, our baggage that we're working through the best, the very best that we can. Um, and, uh, you know, don't just assume that somebody's not lonely or somebody's not afraid or you know, somebody doesn't need you to ask about them. Um, 
people people need your love people need your love people need your care amen to that amen to that and the way you carry yourself i definitely would have never guessed you had a learning disability <laughs> especially the way with the book with all the one-liners and everything i'm like okay <laughs> Like learning disability, like she probably had to work extra hard to make up for. Maybe that's why she comes off as so darn polished. That's probably the reason why. <laughs> well, thank you for that. I appreciate that comment. I'm actually dyslexic. Oh, okay. But when I was, I mean, I'm 60, I'm almost 62. So when I was growing up, you know, we didn't have dyslexia. We just had, you're in the blueberry group. <laughs> you're, you're in the non-reader group. <laughs> you know, and everybody knows you're a blueberry, so you must be stupid. So, um, you know, that's that's kind of how we did it back in my day. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, but uh, yeah, so you know, I think it, it's you can't always tell, you know. And I know, I know, really strong women that I have seen that are now leaders in the community, or they're, you know, they're business coaches or life coaches or whatever. But they're on international levels, and they're very big personalities. But they've been homeless, or, you know, I mean, they, <laughs> these women have had tremendous struggles to overcome. They didn't just show up, you know, polished and fantastic at at, at fifty five without some bumps and bruises along the way. <sighs> Yeah, you're definitely right. And and, it, and funny enough, really, the polish and the professionalism really doesn't show out of size without some kind of setback or some kind of bumps and bruises at all. Right, right. Yeah, it, it is because you overcome that you shine the way you do. <laughs> That's right. It's because you overcome is the way you shine, the way you do. Wait, I, I, how'd you say that again? <laughs> the, the reason you shine is because you've overcome what you, I, I can't say it the same way, but you, you know, whatever you have overcome, it, it, it is why you shine the way you do. Oh. The, the adversity and, and challenges that you have had to face and rise above and uh, put aside and change your inner dialogue. When when that changes, you shine more brilliantly because you're stronger and more confident in yourself. That's right. Stronger than six pack abs. That's right. Yeah. Yes, indeed. You, you know, you can say, "Wow, I just like I said with my book." You know, I've overcome that. That that's really cool that I have overcome this, and because I've overcome this, I'm even I'm even more powerfully positive about who I am and what I want to be and where I want to go than I was before. That's right, with all the power, baby. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. One of them business queens of power. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Sweet. Well, speaking of queen status, if you were to wake up tomorrow and you were 25 again, but this time in the current year of 2020, with all of your mass knowledge and experience, what advice would you give to yourself? Um, don't listen to the noise and love yourself. And really, you know, I just did not, I did not have any idea how to love myself at all. And it starts with just finding, you know, find, find one thing that you like about yourself and, and, and just allow that to be where your focus lies until it grows to two things. And then it grows to three things. Um, when I started this, I, I consider my journey, I've always been, uh, I've always been on the path of self-improvement and self-discovery, but I would say, the, the biggest awakening really has come with recognizing that I didn't like myself and then what could I like about myself? Uh, and once you can find one thing that you can like about yourself, then you can find two things that you can like about yourself. And I've never met anybody I didn't like something about them. No matter how we're showing up, we're all doing the best we can. Oh, yeah, 
That's right, the best we can indeed. That's right, the best we can, like two can Sam. That's right. Oh, sometimes, yeah. sometimes the best we can is really ugly. <laughs> 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 but it's still the best we got. <laughs> Sad truth is sometimes that's the best we have. Oh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yeah, definitely right. Because life is sweet, but it's not always beautiful. Right. You know, ugly stuff happens. And I know very few people who have gone through, you know, childhood and, and come away completely unscathed. <laughs> You know, where they, they have no negative stories in their head at all. We all have negative stories in our head. And, uh, and, then, and then they kind of grow as we get into our 30s, and all of a sudden in our 40s, we're like, whoa, what the heck happened here? Yeah, you can say that again. Right, yeah. <laughs> you can and, say and that so, again. So then, we gotta, then you, then you got to start, you know, you can, either, you can either feed that negative image of yourself you can recognize oh wait a minute I, I i you know i have all these stories in my head about people don't like me and i'm not smart enough and i'm not pretty or tall or short or whatever it is you, you can feed those stories or you can stop and recognize the, the the beauty in yourself and create new stories new stories of a person that is loving and kind and beautiful and smart and talented and included and liked capable you can always write a new story for yourself oh yeah that's right writing a new story indeed so that means there's going to be a second book coming out after this one right <laughs> probably <laughs> Probably. Once you do it once, it's kind of an addiction. <laughs> I tell people it's a lot like having a child. You know, that right after your baby's born, you're like, I am never doing this again. Never am I having another baby. And like a year and a half later, you're like, when are we having another baby? <laughs> this is great. When are we doing this again? <laughs> Well, for those who want more of you and their lives, what's the best way for folks to keep in contact with you? Um, you can find me at lisasterns.com. And I do have a, and that's S-T-E-A-R-N-S. -E um, I do have a newsletter and you can click on the front of my website and sign up for my newsletter. And it's biz tips. It's very short. I'm hoping very soon to go to video. Right now, it's still a sh very short, um, you know, it's like a three steps to improve your business or whatever it is. The other thing, my husband and I do a podcast called Just One Thing. So you can find us out there and it's the just one small thing you can do to improve your life in the area of your relationships, your health, uh, your well-being, your business, your happiness. And it's, that again is very short. It's only a 15 minute podcast. I'm getting ready to fill some mastermind slots and that information is also on my website. So if you're looking to to take your business to that next level, if you can't get out of your head and got you're overwhelmed with all your ideas or can't get it organized your schedule is running you instead of you running your schedule uh you can be a part of one of my mastermind groups as well Woohoo! well there you have it folks there you have it check out our fabulous site it'll definitely be in the show notes check out the fabulous podcast with her husband but just one thing yes indeed be sure to get a you know, look out for that audio book version too of Lisa's book. For Gotta get on that. Yep. That's, that's in the works. That's right. Cause they need to hear the voice too. And maybe even have the book in front of them while I listen to the audio book, like it's story time. Oh, that'd be cool. That's right. Indeed. That's right. Indeed. So in the parting words for the folks still listening, Lisa. Take a moment to love yourself today. Since you made it to the end of this episode, it looks like you really enjoyed yourself. Since you enjoyed this episode, be sure to share it with at least three people in your network and tell them what you really liked about this episode. 